All right. Thank you for staying with Daybreak. The State of the Nation conversation starts right now. Let me introduce my guest one more time. Honorable Dr. Kuro Kot is here, party leader, Third Way Alliance, Asante for making time. Honorable Dr. Daniel Manduku, Member of Parliament for Nyaribari Masaba, thank you very much for making time. Honorable Joe Nyutu, Senator for Morang, Asante Sana for making time. And Honorable Willis Otieno, Deputy Party Leader, Safina, thank you very much for making time. Let's start off with the dailies here. We see a lot going on in the front page, but there's one that is an issue that is still sticking out in public. Call off the strike or face the music. Doctors are told as the strike enters day 29, striking doctors have been given 24 hours to call off their nationwide strike or face disciplinary action. Head of Public Service Felix Uzge has urged them to return to the negotiation table in compliance with a court order. In order new to I'll start with you on this. What is the best solution towards this issue? 29 days down the line, everyone is just stamping, patients are suffering, the doctors are not letting go. The government is not budging. In fact, SRC Chair Lin Mengich was here and told us that the 70,000 stipend for interns will not change. The doctors, on the other hand, are saying the CBO of 2017 guaranteed them a 206,000 pay for the interns, and without that, they're not going back to work. Thank you, Trevor, and good morning uh, to you and to every other person that is viewing us <coughs> this morning. I think for me, the best uh, uh, solution would be, would be for the doctors and the government to agree to uh, go back to the table and uh, uh, have negotiations. Uh, they, can, um, they can agree uh, to have the CBA implemented maybe in phases. Uh, 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 because we need the doctors back to hospital, and the government has pronounced itself through His Excellency the President that uh, uh, but, uh, we may not afford to meet uh, the, 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 the requirements of the agreement that is the CBA. So I think it would be, because these doctors are Kenyans, most of them are Kenyans, and they know that um, our patients are suffering in hospitals. At the same time, of course, they also need to be remunerated well. Uh, but I think we need to strike a balance. Uh, uh, does our economy, can our economy afford to implement the CBA fully at this time? Uh, so that uh, we meet the doctor's uh, uh, demands, uh, maybe to the extent that we can be able to, and the doctors also accept to uh, to, to, you know, <coughs> negotiation is about give and take. Uh, so I think uh, for me, Trevor, in short, uh, I think we need to uh, be very genuine. Uh, the doctors, the government, uh, sit down as Kenyans, all of us, and agree on the way forward. Otherwise, we cannot continue having our patients suffering and dying in hospitals. Yeah. And we also do not want the doctors uh, 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 to, to, to be poorly remunerated. Yeah. So it's a matter of striking the balance for me. Uh, Dr. Manduku, it's where the, this striking the balance is where the problem is. In fact, the doctors are not buying the affordability of this question. They say that there's, they've been told there's no money to implement the CBA. They are not buying that argument. What is the best way forward now? Uh, thank you. First of all, do you even buy that argument that they uh, can't afford to pay? Uh, let me say this. I think uh, uh, a little background is important here. Yeah. In 2001, there was a famous Abuja declaration, which sought to ensure that in Africa, every country spent at least 15% of its budget on the health sector. Unfortunately, 20 years later, only two countries have met that threshold, South Africa and Cape Verde. Countries like Uganda are still at 5%. And so doctors are arguing from a point that at least 15% of the money should be ring fenced and spent on the health sector. But more than that, the CBA is a legally binding agreement. Never mind that it was signed in 2017, a few months to the elections. And I had uh, one governor implying that it may have been signed under duress. And so it is not going to be implemented. But then uh, what we need to do, I think, in my view, yeah. and I want to agree with my, my colleagues in Etanyutu, it's time to find a midway point. The 70,000 stipend, yes, it is there. They're looking at 206,000 206, shillings. The government needs to give, and the doctors need to give and take, so that we start from a midpoint and look at the low-hanging fruits, like get back to work. Because the truth be said, we are losing a lot of patients. And as a country, how many 
must die before we sit down and agree. Is it 500? Is it 1,000? But even more than that, uh, uh, Trevor, I think uh, the country and the minister in charge of health needs to also have a calling to duty and go beyond the, six, the, the, the eight to five uh, working schedule and really get into the understanding of the doctor's plights. Because listening to her speaking, I find her very casual with this matter. And so here I call her moral obligation yeah. to look at how are our patients suffering. And uh, Trevor, this can be sorted out. Other countries have done it. And I'll give you an example of Rwanda. They probably have a lower budget than we do. They pay their doctors not too well, but still the health sector works. Mm. And so it's not just about money. It's also about putting everything in place okay. and working with the devolved units. All right. Uh, the president in his manifesto promised to have a, um, a commission that will take care of the health workers. Yeah. After he won the elections, we don't know what happened to that commission. Maybe as a starting point, we should actually say that devolving health was a mistake in the first place. And we need to go get back and see how can we have a commission, just like we have the Teacher <coughs> Service Commission yeah. and others, to deal with the welfare of the doctors and other medical practitioners. Okay. Dr. Kuru, was devolving health a mistake? And now the members of parliament, like Honorable Dr. Manduku, are thinking of impeaching the CS. Is that um, a solution to this standoff? First of all, that's so wrong. Uh, with all due respect, devolving health was never a mistake. Yeah. It actually ought to be devolved even to the very world level because it's a service that's critical to, to the nation of Kenya. In fact, if you look at Kenya's interests in terms of priority, you look at health, education, food security, and security itself. Those are the priorities any country really must put up there. In fact, so if people in Kenya are not enjoying those services at the very doorsteps, and that's all the whole concept of devolution, taking services to the people, and that is what will probably bring equality or equity in our country. Yeah. So I think I would like to support uh, Dr. Manduk when he says that the, the minister currently in charge of matters health is so casual. Not only is she casual, but she's so ignorant. Uh, these threats that go to work or face the music is actually a thing of the past. This is a person who, in my view, does not understand constitutional liberties and freedoms and rights of individuals, <coughs> doctors or otherwise. And this is well articulated in the Constitution in Article 37. It is the right of any Kenya to demonstrate, to picket, and you know, to demand uh, administrative actions. So this issue of threats really, first of all, as a solution, must be kept away. Don't threaten the doctors because it is their right. The second point I want to make, uh, um, Trevor, is that there is so much ignorance around what is a medical intern. And I, yesterday before I came to this show, I actually spoke to a very good friend of mine. And he told me, you know, in the practice of medicine everywhere in the world, an intern, medical intern, is actually a fully qualified doctor. Yeah. This is a person who actually leads a team of physicians or medics. They're actually on the front line. It's like a soldier on the front line. So we are treating them like uh, uh, people who have not completed a course. They come to our office to learn apprenticeship. Mm. This is not apprenticeship. These are actually fully qualified doctors, you know, and they should be paid. And, you know, in contradistinction to the pay to the politicians, have you ever heard that the salaries of members of parliament or MCS <laughs> has delayed? <laughs> <laughs> they are here, they'll tell us. <laughs> Manduk is here and so is Senator Newton. Yeah. Is there a time when their salaries has, de has, has delayed? If you compare, for example, even the members of parliament yeah. or politicians generally, let's not uh, isolate, politicians generally, holding public offices, most of whom I can, be, I can tell him probably over 50% are not even qualified to hold any position in any public office. But they are paid so handsomely compared to a doctor who trains for five years then another one year, and he saves lives every minute. Every minute, not every day, yeah. every minute. But we don't appreciate them. We, instead, we tell them 70,000. Let me, let me break down for you, Trevor. Say a salary of 70,000 yeah. Yeah, for a medic. After taxation, that's probably about what, 55,000? 47. Yeah? 47. They take home 47. 47. They take home 47. Okay, uh, rent. How much rent do you expect that doctor? 
to pay so that he is fresh of mind, is able to wake up in good time, to go actually into that theater and save lives. You'd probably be living somewhere, I don't know, I can't even imagine yeah. where you would live at 47. As a, as a medic, as a, as a professional, fully trained professional, where we have actually invested six years of our money. Yeah. Now, you want to tell me that somebody who can actually come to work with a right state of mind to be able to. But meanwhile, you have got noisemakers in a national, county assemblies, national assembly and senate, who are probably not even qualified, just because they made noise in some constituency, <laughs> and, they, and they take home maybe close to a million Kenya shillings. Now, the other example I will give, yeah. you know, when doctors uh, went on strike, I think, I don't know, was it 2017? Yeah, when, we, yeah. when we imported... The longest strike, about 100 imported, days. When we imported the, uh, the, Cubans. the Cubans. Yeah. Do you know how much those people are taking home? We don't even know whether they have since gone back or they are still here. They are taking home upwards of 540 to a million Kenya shillings. The question really for me, and we need to ask this as a state of our nation, how much do we hate our own people? Why is it that we cannot appreciate people who are actually uh, doing such important work, you know, to, to building our nation? Yeah. And, and, you know, Kenyans must go back to memory lane at independence. We were told that we must eradicate at least um, three, -ish, three things. Yeah. Um, uh, poverty, uh, ignorance, and disease matters health. Meaning those are really the priorities of Kenya. So yeah. that whatever money we collect, whatever taxes we collect, we must prioritize first. Yeah. The problem I see, and it's not only Nakumicha, but I also see it from the president's perspective. The president is now prioritizing debt payment mm -hmm. and not the interest of the people of Kenya. You know, for me, debt payment should come at the bottom of the list. And in fact, we shouldn't even be borrowing in the first place because all we need to do is make sure that there are, there are, we, are we are actually industrializing Kenya yeah. to be able to, to reduce our borrowing. And you know, Trevor, this takes me to the bigger question about the state of our nation today. Yeah. If you look at the state of our nation today, I'll just mention in passing about seven key issues that actually describe Kenya today as we speak. There is a health crisis. Of course, we have the doctors, the clinical officers are, are, are joining it. We have a tag, we have a undecided nurses. So that's a crisis on health. Of course, and then we have got fake fertilizers, which is threatening food security and agriculture in our country. We have got cash crunch in public schools. We have got banditry that is actually um, raging havoc in parts of this country. Uh, we are not able to, uh, to, uh, to contain panga-wielding gangs uh, who are back in the cities, in the, in the estates. But we still think, let's send a thousand police officers to Haiti. It's theft of public money that is actually uh, you know, happening every day. It's recorded. Control of budget has said it. Auditor General has said it. Uh, we have got a failed parliament that is actually not checking on the executive. Uh, because clearly now, parliament is basically an appendage of the, of the executive. And that's why you can see President chest stamping uh, as if public money is actually his money. In fact, if you look at, and uh, maybe Will is here also, uh, council uh, will, will correct me. If you read chapter 12 on public finance, the president has very minimal role, if any, on how public money should be spent. But when the president says that, you know, uh, you know, we don't have money, we'll do this. And, and Kenyans are not buying this lie that yeah. we don't have money. Because they are also seeing the like yes <coughs> yeah. in government itself. Okay. I mean, we are being treated to a lot of lies. On the, is it two months ago, the president said that the economy has stabilized. Now, because the doctors are demanding you know, uh, pay, we are told, no, we cannot afford. Let's live within our means. Yeah. But is government itself living within its own means okay. in terms of its expenditure? The answer is no. All right. Well, is, is this an issue of a constrained fiscal space or lack of goodwill from the leadership to deal with this strike? No, no the first thing that we must accept is that there is a binding CBA yes. that was entered into voluntarily between the union and the government. And you cannot say that the government, I mean, the government was coerced, was under duress when it was signing. In terms of equality of arms, in that negotiating table, the government was far much stronger than the union. Mm -hmm. So they committed to this CBA. So what we have is that the government went on strike at first by failing to honor the CBA. The doctors and any medical worker who has a CBA with the government is entitled to benefit fully from that CBA. If the second point that the government desires to pay less, to walk away from that CBA, allegedly because they don't have enough money. Let's start from saying this. Start by reducing your own salary. What you're earning as president, as CS, as members of parliament, as county assembly members, reduce everybody's salary. Then say, 
you see everybody in Kenya is taking a salary cut. Then you call the doctors now, back to the negotiating table and tell them, this is the state of our economy. We are not able to afford our commitment. Can we now renegotiate this CBA to reduce the terms of engagement? But if you've not had that kind of a conversation, why should the doctors even waste a single minute negotiating with the government on uh, payment or going back to work? When the previous negotiation, the commitment that was made, that was signed, that is binding, is not being honored. What is the value of your word today? If the word that you gave seven years ago, you are refusing to honor. Yeah. You are a dishonorable man. You should not be believed. You are actually a quack. And the doctors are actually right. To re in fact, they should refuse, in my <coughs> view, to participate in any negotiation yeah. before the CBA that is existing is complied with. And number two, tied to that, is that once the CBA is entered into, it is registered in court yeah. so to be binding. binding. It's a legally binding document. Yeah. So the first person who is in contempt of court is the one refusing and failing to honor the CBA, mm. not the one who is exercising his Article 37 right yeah. to agitate for the implementation of the legally binding court order. So William Ruto, Nakumisha, Salary Relation Commission, they are all in contempt of court. And we should be dealing with them purging their act of contempt first mm -hmm. before any negotiations can be done. The th third point I want to make is this. When you say you don't have money, but you have money that you are maintaining a very luxurious lifestyle at the expense of doctors. You have money to increase the allocations to the office of first lady, the office of second lady, they have, you've increased supplementary budget. You don't even have an office called Secretary. They don't even exist, but you are located them almost between the two offices, more than 1.2 billion Kenya shillings for two individuals to do what? These are people who had lives before. They had existing earnings so they could live. Why are you spending 1.2 billion shillings on two offices when you cannot spend 4 billion to honor your legal obligation? When you look at the characters in government today, People who were barely last year, two years ago, almost bankrupt. They are driving around in big cars, Balenciaga, they are wearing Gucci belts, uh, somebody to watches that are worth 25 million Kenya shillings. So, and we know their salaries. And, and we know their salaries, which are publicly available. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's be honest here. Yeah. These people are not being genuine with doctors. Then number, th number three, doctors are actually leading Kenyans in a war, a war against a disease. Mm. I have never had the salary of a soldier delayed because the soldiers also are leading us in a war to protect our borders, mm. to protect our country. Why do we despise our medical workers mm. and think that only the physical attack, that in any event, Kenya has not been at any war for the last more than 20 years. We've not been at any war. But, I mean external war, but we are having a continuous internal war of disease every single day. Yeah. And the first responders are our medical workers. Why can't we invest, as Dr. Manduku says, yeah. meet our commitment under the Abuja Declaration to commit 15% of our national revenue to this medical facility, to this medical health sector? Yeah. Then the final point I want to make is this. When we even talk about doctors or medical officers, workers, generally, do you know there's nobody in this country who works like those people? Mm -hmm. And I say this, with tremendous respect to what they have done to us. You only get to appreciate what a doctor will do to you when you have an emergency patient. It is in the middle of the night. There is a medical emergency, there's an accident, you appear before a facility. And you, have, you can do nothing, even if you have all the money in the world. You can do nothing to save their lives. The only person who will come in to assist is that night nurse, is that intern, that registrar, that you will find at the facility, who will try to find something that they need to do yeah. to help save the life of your patient. So we must understand that they don't work like us. Me as a lawyer can say, I'm going to court, I'll go with the court to Kuru today at eight o'clock. I'm out by five, I've done my work, I'll go home. Even if a client was arrested at midnight, I'll tell him, there's nothing I can do to you, we meet tomorrow at eight o'clock mm -hmm. in court. But a doctor does not have that luxury to say, he's been called at midnight, there's an emergency, that I cannot come because I'll wait until 8 o'clock. Yeah. These people work 24 hours. Okay. If they're not on duty, they're on call. 
if an emergency occurs, even if you're on your annual leave, yeah. everybody takes off to appear before the facility to attend to that emergency. So we must treat these sector workers, in my view. Yeah. This should be our number one priority workers. Okay. And if we don't honor our commitment to them, yeah. we have no business renegotiating anything okay. in this sector. Uh, 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 yes. Trevor, just on a very light note, eh? yeah. you know, compared, for example, to the police, today say you, have a, you, have a, you are being attacked in your home and you call, say, a police station. You know, most likely the first thing they will be t tell you, oh, we don't have fuel. But doctors will never tell you that, that I don't have a car or, a f or fuel to come. They will come regardless because they, they took oath to save yeah. lives. Okay. You know, so I, like Willie said, honestly, I think we really look down upon our medics, yet it is one of the most fundamental uh, services that any country in the world okay. must I want to hear final comments on this from yeah, for me, I think uh, that we uh, switch topics. Yes, I, I just realized that there's a curious uh, silence from uh, other labor unions. The grandfather of the labor movement, uh, Atuli, is quiet. Atuli was here yesterday. <laughs> he said uh, that he supports the doctors. Uh, we have uh, the teachers' unions are quiet. Hmm. And you wonder, have teachers not lost patients? And uh, for me, really, it's about uh, having a collective uh, responsibility as a government and as a country mm -hmm. and fight for our rights. Remember, at independence, disease was identified as one of the problems that yeah. bedeviled our country. And 60 years later, we are still not able to fix it. I think it's time as a country we supported these doctors. Okay. All right, Joe. Um, are, are you buying the, the argument that there's no money? Um, Speaking from the government. I have no reason to believe that the head of state would say uh, there is no money while there is money. Uh, because we know, um, uh, and uh, I do not want to go back to the arguments that have been uh, raised by my colleagues, my panel, fellow colleague panelists. Uh, but uh, but uh, Trevor, I, I think every one of us, even on the government side, mm -hmm. we agree that the services that the doctors offer are very critical services, very essential. So I don't think that is in, con is in contention. Uh, but what we should be dealing with is exactly that question. Uh, Dr. Kuro Ekot says, um, says that we should not prioritize uh, debt repayment. But Trevor, <coughs> of course, there are also consequences of not uh, uh, repaying your debts, and I think uh, I, 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 I beg to disagree with him uh, that uh, we do other things and then we ignore repayment of debt. But what, what, what I want to, uh, to, 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 to maybe say in conclusion is this would not be the first time that the government is renegotiating, uh, re renegotiating with uh, workers. We have seen uh, renegotiations uh, between the government and, for example, Kenya National Union of Teachers and COPED. In fact, uh, Trevor... Uh, you know, I'm the chair of the Education Committee of the Senate. Uh, we have been dealing with uh, a petition of teachers who retired between 1997 and 2003. You remember there was uh, an agreement that was entered into, but then the government then was not able to meet the, 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 it's part of the bargain because of, again, of the availability of finances and many other things. But still, there was a renegotiation when uh, President Kibaki came into office. And even then, they agreed that the new arrangement was, that, 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 that was going to be implemented in five years. So it is not new that government may not have enough uh, resources to meet uh, the requirements of a CBA. What uh, maybe we should be talking about is how do we implement this in phases? Yeah. But to demand that it be implemented uh, at once, uh, at once yeah. I think uh, even from uh, previous history of unionism, yeah. I think uh, we would not be very fair. Okay. So to answer your question, I think uh, what the president is saying is that we cannot be able to implement it in full now. Yeah. But maybe there is room for renegotiation okay. and okay. for maybe a staggered okay. uh, implementation of the same. All right. You know, you have to remember, before, yes. before we go to the next topic, eh, yeah. it's important we say this. Maybe Kenyans need to know exactly how much are we talking in terms of the CBA. 
I think it's between 4.5 or 5 billion. Yeah. You want to tell me that is money we cannot actually afford now? So, so the government has offered 2.4 billion. So no, but I'm saying it listen, takes the amount. It, yeah. Listen, I mean, with the kind of money that's being expended, with the kind of evidence you have seen, the Auditor General report, control of budget. What is 4.5 billion actually to settle these things? That's why I don't buy the idea of staggering. Mm -hmm. In fact, maybe now we should we should we should change the, uh, the the direction and say that all public officials must now use public facilities. Actually, we should cancel all these private Medicare, medical, medic, medic, medical insurance for all our politicians. We use Kenyatta National Hospital, Bagadi and the rest. And then let's see, you know, I, I think for me we should go that route because that's probably when now leaders can actually appreciate the need for these health facilities okay. to be well equipped. Yeah. Because if you look at what the doctors are saying, just, you know, pay us. You know, there's a legal binding document. But then again, I'm not surprised with this government. After all, how many court orders have they disobeyed? So I don't even, they even care about this uh, uh, argument at all. <laughs> so all right. it's <laughs> in fact, just, just yeah. to tie to that, you know, yeah. all these members of parliament, they are on health insurance, yeah. more than 20 million cover. They are guaranteed better facilities in private hospitals, better, better care in private hospitals, and even treatment abroad. The people the doctors are fighting for is you and I, the poor Kenyan, who their first place of call is a public facility. As Okuru says, let's make it compulsory that anybody whose medical cover is paid for by the taxpayer, the poor Kenyan, so that facility, that cover should only be applicable in a public facility. Ruto becomes sick, Kenyatta. Mm. Gashagwa, Kenyatta. Nakumisha, Kenyatta. Nyutu, Kenyatta. Manduku, <laughs> Kenyatta. As the ultimate referral point. <laughs> so that let them now, you will see, if that were the case, yeah. I assure you, the doctors in Kenyatta or the medical workers in this country will never even go to on strike for one day. As it is, this is a very abstract conversation to them mm -hmm. because they are guaranteed anybody gets even a cough, he'll go to Nairobi Hospital, he'll go to Aga Khan Hospital South or even South Africa just for a cough. Mm -hmm. But me and you will end up in, at Bagadi. Uh, from Bagadi, we go to Kenyatta for referral. But remember also there's something about this I, I think is very important, Kenyans not. If there's anybody who at his work faces the most risk, is a medical work. Risk from infections yeah. just by being in close contact mm -hmm. with the patients who are coming to your facility. You cannot start by saying we're removing the risk allowance. When the nature of your engagement, by its nature, is very risk of us, you are overexposed to risk on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, Trevor, okay. we have such short memory. Yes. <laughs> you might go back maybe two years ago yeah. during the COVID, COVID. Yeah? yeah? When the country was under lockdown, these mm. members of parliament, including the presidents, were hiding in their comfort zones. But only the doctors <laughs> could actually face sick people. You know, yeah. you know, and, and, Trevor, and the risk. You know, Trevor, okay. it's not about, <laughs> <laughs> it's not about <laughs> members of parliament. No, 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 I, I, I just want us to, yes. I mean, that just, I'm just really <clears throat> emphasizing the point uh, Willis has made, yeah? Yeah. that honestly, these are people on the front line. They have to take fire from the enemy. And that enemy is actually disease. Yeah. And I'm just reminding Kenyans, if you look at COVID time, honestly, it, the country was under lockdown. All of us were comfortable. We wake up in the morning, you don't know what do I do. But a doctor, will wake up and no, no, I have to go to the hospital yeah. to save lives. These are the people who are actually treating lightly. I think we are joking. Isn't okay, it? Manduku. No, I think uh, our friends are turning this into members of parliament. What is them? No, this is a national conversation. But it's it, it, a conversation that we should have, that we members should of parliament should, should actually use public further. facilities so that they see the need of uh, improving the facilities. Because you don't use the public facilities. Agreed That's a you. fact, right? That's agreed with you. Why are you uh, not using public facilities, uh, Manduku? I haven't fallen sick. And, 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 your, and your, or, or your medical cover is, <laughs> Maybe when is, is paid by the public. <laughs> yes. But uh, I agree with you. Yeah. It's a good way to go. And I think there's a country that does that. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember which one it is. Where the head of state himself goes to public facilities. Rwanda. It is Rwanda, yes, mm. again. That shows the confidence in the system. Yeah. Mm. And to instill confidence in the system doesn't need much. Mm -hmm. Just a question of just talking to the primary providers, who in this case are the doctors, that we are now living on the streets for almost 50 days now, close to, sorry, close to 30 days now. Yeah, it's 29 days. Yeah. Uh, Trevor, um, very fast. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, I think I want to remind our colleagues, uh, uh, Willis and uh, Dr. Alcott, yeah. that we, we were not born members of parliament. Uh, we <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I was only elected so in 2022. So, so, let them not uh, create an impression that we have no idea whatsoever about what happens in public hospitals. Uh, so, uh, we have been in this space, yeah. we just got into this just the other day. So, we are not very, we are not ignorant of what happens there. And personally, I have no problem being treated at, at Kenyatta should I get ill. But I also want to, uh, though it's not uh, very much related to this, but because Dr. Okot again talked about it, uh, I think uh, 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 members of parliament are not the best noisemakers because he, he at one point, he, he like uh, was uh, trying to imply that the only qualification uh, uh, that uh, you need to have to be elected as a member of parliament is to be uh, the loudest uh, noisemaker. Uh, I, I think uh, there are people, uh, Dr. Okot, and you know that, that uh, are highly professional and they are in politics. And politics anyway has to be done. If you want politics to be clean, then you need clean people in uh, politics. He himself is a party leader. Uh, yes, yes, no, yes, yes. I, I don't know whether he would say <laughs> okay. that uh, okay. he is the loudest. Well, but, I'm, but, I'm, but I'm not elected. <laughs> but I'm not elected senator. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a big break here. 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 Let's take a big break here.